All right. I mean, oh, go ahead. Number some pressure. <laughs> I want to go back again. I got some questions about the Killer B era. Uh oh. And you were a part of. I mean, I guess he's the fourth member. Is he fifth? I mean, no, we got Ben no. Brown, Bell, Brian, it, 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 no, he no, might be six. No, we no, 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 in no, there no. It, It's Ben. <laughs> it's L. Bell. It's A. B. Then I go with my man Vince, aka Vince. Then I'm throwing. Oh, I got Martavis or Boswell, right? I probably go Boz. Yeah, I go Boz. But either way, he's a part, he's an original member. He's an original founding member of the Killer Bees. Yes. How many rings you think you guys should have won during that time period? Nine. If we would, if we should, if we could have won them, we would have won them. You guys understand? We were running against the. We were the. We were running against a buzzsaw. We played against probably one, arguably one of the best coaches and one of the best players to ever play football, along with one of the best tight ends to ever play football. Like, know what I mean? You gotta understand. Like we were in, we were in Tom Brady's Jordan era. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> how many Hall of How Ain't many Hall of Famers? <laughs> how many Hall of Famers didn't get a ring because they had to play Michael Jordan? Mm-hmm. Does Reggie Miller suck? Does Patrick Ewing suck? <laughs> Do they suck? No, they don't suck. Does Carl Malone and John Stockton suck? No. I know we ain't going to say that uh, Sir Charles Barkley suck. I know we ain't going yeah, to like, so, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, what do you want to say? Like, everybody's like, oh, was it Ben? Was it this? No, it had nothing to do with us. Yeah. We were good. You know, you win some, you lose some. There's some pluses and minuses in there. But, man, when you're, when you're going against one of those guys, if you're going against one of those guys, it's tough. No. It's tough, man. Go ask the Cowboys how they felt when they had to go against Joe Montana and then Steve Young. <laughs> you think they were like, oh, yeah, we suck. We underperformed. <laughs> like, what you what you want to hear? You want the truth or you want me to lie and make something up and make nah. excuses? I'm not going to make excuses. That's the reality. Oh, you guys lost to Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah we would have lost to Jacksonville and then we would have went and played the, the, the Super Bowl. That's, that's even buzz. Yeah. I, I, think, I think you guys beat the Patriots. <laughs> like, what you, hey, what you want me to say? I mean, because that was the year that was the same year with the whole Jesse catch no yeah, catch situation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if I remember correctly, you got to pick that game too, right? I did. You did pick all break. So you was what we needed. <laughs> what we tripping on? Yeah. You was gonna run it back in another pick. Been at we home ain't tripping. Too. Come on, bro. The Jesse James yeah. catch would have gave us the one seed. It might have. I mean, but should have, could have, would have things happen all the time. You don't know how yeah. many times I've been at football games and we've gotten away with something egregious, bro. I'm just like. That's ball, man. Ball don't lie. I still don't understand <laughs> how we got out of the wild card. Cincinnati, the game where Ben leaves, Shea gets the oh. strip. Like, that don't, that's not supposed that's, to happen. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy. Bo- when when crazy. Vontaze, hit, Vontaze hits AB, yeah. we're all on the sideline. And Boswell looks down at us and is like, oh, y'all boys ready to go to the playoffs? Yeah, it's just nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Ice cold. He goes out there and boosts. He's like, we're about to win. Like, it's over. Like, Vontaze put us in the playoffs. It's nuts. That's after the yeah, boys had ran to the locker room. It's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. So I'm saying, like, football is a game like that. Like, no. that's why people love it. That's why I love it. No. No. But for real, though, running into a person in their go era, that's that's a difficult thing. That's a tough mountain to climb. It's tough. No. I hear what you're saying. Now, I got a spicy one for you. And oh, you might even, you might man. even remember this. Uh-oh, here we go now. People are tagging me on this screenshot of an old tweet here. And it kind of has to do what we're saying a little bit. So this is from Team Dad. Happened six days ago. You might remember it. Five, six days ago. <laughs> it happened six days ago. You might remember it. He, he wanted us to ask you this. Jesus. Honest question. Mike seems like a great players coach, but why do his teams often seem unprepared, lose the teams they should beat, costing them a playoff spot, or better seating, and why did they underperform in the playoffs, especially recently? Five and eight the last 12 years with a Hall of Fame quarterback. And then you said, I can answer this question easy, but y'all not going to like the answer. I mean, I just did for the most part at the beginning of my career. That was the answer. The second time we lost to the Browns, everybody was hurt. We played three games in 12 days. Mm. But towards ACL, the other year before that, Mm. our fifth string quarterback, a guy named Duck, was at quarterback. (laughs) Like, what do you guys want us to do? Like, you want us to, like, I'm just saying, like, Nobody in the NFL sucks. Like everybody has this preconceived notion. Please that say that again. Or just this, like please nobody say in that again because they don't. They don't believe no, it, bro. They don't believe it. <laughs> like there are no D one double A teams on your schedule. Like, yeah. Any week, any Sunday, you can go out there and get popped, bro. Like this like, is dead facts. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> any Sunday, like, any man. day. Like any day. Like any day, you can go out there and Joe Hayden could tweak his big toe, and Odell just decides today he ate his Wheaties and he's going four three one. On. Ain't nothing we got for it. And, and what and what is Vince Williams, the linebacker, going to do about that? 
What you gonna do? You just gonna watch him run that big post and you're gonna be like, damn, mm-hmm. you got him, Joe. Or mm-hmm. I mean, that ain't happened, but it just it's football, guys. Like, that's what makes it entertaining. That's why we love it. You know what I mean? Like they want it to be cookie cutter or storybook in a way. Yeah. That's what the media does. The media creates that so they can sell it and they can talk about it. But the actual factuals, when you break down and you look at it, it just is what it is. Like it's not difficult to understand the conceptualize. It's not hard. No. Am I lying, Moats? You play? Man, you Am know, I you, 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 <laughs> speak, you <laughs> preach into the choir over here. I say no, this I'm every single – time. oh, it's a Tomlin law song. How y'all, I'm like, bro, you realize they got all pros? They got pro bowlers? They got player of the years on their score? Like everybody is First nice. First of all, I just want to take Everybody's this moment nice, right bro. here to give Mike T his flowers. Talk about it. You guys have no clue. Talk about it. How good – Mike Tomlin is mm-hmm. like the the Pittsburgh still or Bill Coward for that matter. Talk about it like, back to back. Are Talk so about it. Spoiled when it comes to the man, it is man. The man is amazing. Like I've talked to other coaches and been like, "Yo, you're a head coach. You're an idiot." <laughs> but I only feel that way is because of the level of competence I've been around for the majority of my career. Mm-hmm. Like I pretty much have a PhD in football at this point. I had Dick LeBeau as a coach. I had Bobby Bowden as a coach. I had Mickey Andrews as a coach. I had Jimbo Fisher as a coach. I had Mike Tomlin as a coach. Your lineup's impeccable. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a, I have an outstanding football resume when it comes to coaching. Yeah. Coach Stoops was my coach. I played with one of the Stoops boys. Dang. What you mean? Like, when did you get hold on? Real awesome. What, what year was the Stoops? Hold on, man. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying, like. Oh, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm just saying, man, I know ball. Yeah. But it's a lot of dudes who don't really know football like that, but they get these jobs because they speak really well. They know somebody. And if you guys knew how many games Mike T coached us out of, mm. but we're not going to say that. Mm. We're not going to come to the media and just be like, man, mm. we suck. But Mike T saved our ass. He had this, <laughs> like, he had this adjustment on the sideline <laughs> and it changed like, our life. <laughs> I'll give y'all one. Forget it. I'll give you one. I'll give you one for sure. I'll give you one. <laughs> I don't know the years on this, but I'll give y'all one. We played Bruce Aarons. He was coaching for the Arizona Cardinals. They had Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer hates the Pittsburgh Steelers, obviously. <laughs> Bruce Aarons hates us, too. <laughs> Bruce Aarons comes out, and they're throwing the ball, and they're doing good stuff. But Mike Tomlin's like, ah, we're not going to make any adjustments. Carson's going to throw him out of this game. Because they're not going to go conservative. They're going to keep throwing the ball because Bruce mm-hmm. likes to push the ball down the field. And they kept throwing the ball. And I tipped one to Law Dog. And Law Dog got a pick, put us in great field position. And we ended up coming back winning that game. Mm-hmm. Is that the Vic that game at home? That, that should have been the Vic, the, the Landry Jones, Martavis put Pat P. Hamstring alert, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yes, indeed. And it's just like, yo, it's little things like that that just, it's, it's countless times, though. I'm talking mm-hmm. about like, Countless times he comes over, and he's like, "Guys, do this." Yeah, they're or only do, doing just, this. This is what we got to do right doing here. This. They're he only doing this. So <laughs> he makes it so simple and effective. I, he's the king right. of that, though. You're right. He will make it's just this, and I'm like, Coach, it didn't seem like it was just that just a second ago. But now that you said it, though, <laughs> yeah. it kind of is. Just that. Look, when you isolate a situational ball, what are they trying to do, Vince? How are they going to attack you situationally? Like this is all. That, don't get beat to the flat. I'm like, dang. That's yeah, it, Coach. Like, oh, right. Mike Tomlin and the Steelers organization, I tweeted out, and I really mean that. I want people to really understand what that means. Mm-hmm. They take players that should not play, mm-hmm. and they turn them into guys that can play. Mm-hmm. Like, you shouldn't be able to thrive like that. Now, very rarely do people's career flounder with the Steelers, and they go other way, other places have Pro Bowl performances. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 100%. That, that rarely does it happen. I mean, James Conner just did it. Shout out yeah. to James Conner. He's Shout an amazing out. player. Mm-hmm. But that but that rarely happens. It doesn't. Most of the time, it's the other way. Most of the time, you leave and you go downhill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because they look at what you can do. They look at you and they're like, man, what can this guy do? Well, let's put him in a situation so he can be successful. Mm-hmm. Let's utilize him this way. Oh, he has an interesting characteristic. Mike T always says, if you're willing and capable of putting your hand in the pile, we will find a way to make you like Facts. productive. Coaches aren't trying to find a way to make people productive. They just want productive people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're not going out of their way to find and make you productive. 
I was in the weight room when I realized that it was me and Ross Cockrell were the lowest round guys on our defense starting. Whew. Ross was a fourth round pick. I was a sixth round pick. Now, everybody else was a first and second round pick. Facts. They have an ESPN. <laughs> it's a real story. This is the truth. I'm in the weight room sitting there, and I'm like, dang, and it's on the TV. And Mike Tomlin and Kevin Cole are sitting in the weight room. And I'm, I, you, they can kind of just see it on my face. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, that sucks. I never thought about it before. <laughs> and Mike T walks over to me. He was like, man, Vince, don't worry about this shit. You about to have 10 sacks this year. Facts. <laughs> I had 8.5. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, that's the type of stuff that you can't bottle that. You can't, like, you can't sell that. That made a world of difference to me. Mm-hmm. And my performance on the field showed that it worked. He had a plan. Yeah. He had a plan for that. Well, and the other thing that I like, too, in terms of how, especially in Pittsburgh, they always talk about, we don't care how you got here. If you can play, we're going to find a spot for you. And when you talk about you being, you and Ross, fourth and sixth rounders, surrounded by first and second rounders, most places, they're going to play the high-end draft picks. They're going to figure out how to get more higher pedigree guys out there. But in Pittsburgh, if you can ball, like you just said, they're going to find a way to give you that opportunity, man. And they're going to let you spin, too. They're going to let you rock. They're going to go do your thing. Yeah. 